Well, here we are. The Boston Bruins were just eliminated in the first round by the Florida Panthers. You guys had it all. Like literally everything you could possibly need. The forward depth. The fantastic defense. The best goaltending tandem in the league by far. A record-breaking season. 65 wins. The most points in a season. And you folded. This was an immaculate fold job. Like one of the greatest I've ever seen. Not only did you lose to the Florida Panthers. You had a 3-1 lead. I understand all Mark was hurt but why were you playing him injured put Swayman in it shouldn't have been that big of a decision bro was great during the regular season as well obviously Allmark was the number one but Swayman had a great year too throw him in in game five Allmark's hurt he can't play but nah losing in the first round to the Florida Panthers you lost to Sergei Barbrovsky Sergei Barbrovsky used to be that guy. Barbrovsky's not that guy anymore. Barbrovsky hasn't been that guy in years. But nah, that's tough. So I'm taking over. Don Sweeney, you're gone. Stick on the ice is taking over as GM. I'm trading every single player on this team. And the goal is not even to win a Stanley Cup. The goal is to make it out of the first round. We need to win four games in the postseason. This forward core, gone. This defensive core led by Charlie McAvoy, gone. Every single player. The goaltending tandem. One of the most elite goaltending tandems we've ever seen, gone. I'm taking over and I'm rebuilding this entire team and there's one trade that needs to be done Matthew Kachuk is coming to the team. He will be a Boston Bruin. That's not for debate Also, before we get into any of the trades if you're happy the Boston Bruins lost in the first round Make sure to subscribe and if you're sad the Boston Bruins lost in the first round Make sure to subscribe If the Boston Bruins screwed up one of your parlays Make sure you subscribe if the Florida Panthers helped one of your parlays Make sure you subscribe basically just subscribe like 75% of the people that watch these videos don't subscribe I don't know why you guys are being L man's like that you guys gotta stop being a bunch of l mans be some w mans and sub to the channel and he's not gonna be the only guy coming here no nah, we're making big moves i'm acquiring matthew kachuk brandon montour and carter verhage i'm bringing all these guys to the team i don't know how i'm gonna get the trade done but i'm bringing these boys in and this is the final deal david pasternak charlie coyle a third round pick dimitri orloff and clifton over to the florida panthers for matthew kachuk brandon montour carter verhage and i'm taking on gudis's contract the deal is complete and now we're rebuilding boston from top to bottom this entire team's changing. Next moves Mike Riley and Gudis, along with a fifth round pick over to the Arizona Coyotes for a seven. We need to free up cap space and nobody wants these guys. Nothing I need to say. We just got to free up cap space. So of course, we got to say goodbye to a lot of franchise faces and that includes Brad Marchand. So I'm sending him along with Carlo over to the Carolina Hurricanes for Seshnikov, Jacob Slavin, and Brett Pesci. Now, obviously this deal is not going to go through. I'm probably going to have to add a lot more assets. Nah, I think I got finessed. They accepted this deal immediately. I just got Seshnikov, Slavin, and Pesci for Brad Marchand. Did I really get finessed? I feel like this was a great deal for us. The next move is just going to be me acquiring tons of depth. Allmark, goodbye. It was a tough injury in the postseason, but things got to change. DeBrusque, Beecher, and Lysel. I'm sending you over to the LA Kings for Gavrikov, Dursey, Philip Deneau, Velarde, and Phoenix Copley. We get two solid defensemen, a great second line center for us, and then a good depth piece in Velarde. So I feel like this is going to be a good move for us in the future. So when it comes to goaltendings, obviously we got to get rid of Allmark and Swayman. And I'm looking at Gorgiev. 3.4 million is going to be an absolute absolute steal especially for how he plays in NHL 23 and he's an 87 overall so for 3.4 million getting an 87 overall goaltender that could be the move you never know but we got to clear up some cap space before we do that so Hampus Lindholm I'm sorry not because I'm trading you it's because I'm sending you back to the Anaheim Ducks for Troy Terry you just got out of that dumpster fire last season and now you're headed back but Troy Terry for 1.4 million that's gonna be a great contract for us since we just got rid of Hampus Lindholm of course we need another defenseman so Forbert and two fourth round picks is gonna go to the New Jersey Devils for Ryan Graves so after all the moves we've done so far we've got our defensive core all set Jacob Slavin and Brendan Montour are going to be our first pairing then Gavrikov and Pesci are going to be the second pairing and on that third pairing we've got Graves and Jersey this is a defensive core I can definitely live with we've got some great defensive defensemen here Brandon Montour is going to hold it down offensively and I think we're sitting pretty solid now it's time to say goodbye to the captain he's been here since 2003 but things need to change so I'm saying Patrice Bergeron over to the Pittsburgh Penguins for Evgeny Malkin straight up a one-for-one -one deal now you might be thinking I'm getting finessed here but I think this is going to work out pretty solid for us because Evgeny Kenny Malkin's going to be on the first line with Seshnikov and Matthew Kachuk. They're getting a plus five overall boost. They got perfect chemistry together and I'm expecting them to do big things. And that's also moving Philip the Deneau down to the second line. So having him in between Carver Hagee and Troy Terry's giving them a plus two overall boost. And the top two lines are looking incredible for us. Now we just got to fill out the bottom six. We're headed back over to Colorado, but we're not picking up Gorg yet. We're actually going to be getting New Hook and Rodriguez for Tyler Bertuzzi, no second to six. Taylor Hall is off to the Nashville Predators for Novak, who's going to be a great third line center for us. And of course, we need a new goalie and we're getting the guy 
whose number is going to be retired in Toronto, Samsonov. This dude single-handedly got this team to the second round. I mean, he didn't necessarily play amazing in the playoffs, but he's the first Toronto Maple Leafs goalie to get them to the second round in over 19 years. You have to retire this man's number. So now that we've acquired Samsonov, we got our goaltending tandem, and that's going to be him and Phoenix Copley holding it down. So with our defensive core set and our goaltending tandem looking pretty solid, it's time to fill out the rest of the forward core. So I'm sending Grizzlick, Krejci, and Newhook over to the Tampa Bay Lightning for Brandon Hagel and Nick Paul. One of the final pieces of the team in Charlie Coyle is going to be packaged up along with a 6th and a 7th over to the Chicago Blackhawks for Taylor Radish, who's going to fit perfectly on our fourth line. But we have two more players to get rid of, Zaka and Frederick. And I'm sending them over to the Nashville Predators as well for two second round picks. And with those two second round picks, I'm going to send them over to the Vegas Golden Knights for Riley Smith, our final deal of the day. So here's our new look Boston Bruins team, and we're looking pretty elite if you ask me. Matthew Kuchuk, Evgeny Malkin, and Sashnikov are going to be manning that first line. And then on that second line, we got Philip Deneau at center with Carver Hagee and Troy Terry as his wingers. Our third line's consisting of Hagel, Novak, and Riley Smith, while the fourth line's got a ton of grit with Nick Paul, Velarde, and Taylor Radish. The defensive core, we already know what that's about. Slavin and Montour on the first pairing, Gavrikov and Pesci on that second, and then Ryan Graves and Dursey holding it down as the third pairing. And in between the pipes, we got Samsonov, a Leafs legend, and Phoenix Copley, a St. Louis legend. So let's see if these guys can lead us to a Stanley Cup. So we might not be breaking the win record this season, but the Boston Bruins are looking fantastic with me taking over. 53-21-8, second in the entire league, only one point behind the Pittsburgh Penguins. We just scored 4.05 goals per game, allowed 2.93 goals per game. Nah, this team's elite on both ends of the ice. Don't sleep on us. I think it's safe to say the Patrice Bergeron trade worked out pretty well for us, as Evgeny Malkin's going to lead the way with 111 points this season. 50 goals, 61 helpers. Dude's looking absolutely fantastic. And of course, the father of the Boston Bruins, Matthew Kachuk, a decent season for him. 27 goals, 63 helpers, 90 points. He's the father of this team. You just have to accept it at this point. Brandon Hagel was a great late pickup for us, as he's getting 67 points this season, while Brandon Montour is going to lead the defense with 15 goals and 36 assists for 51 points. And that final move in Riley Smith worked out for us. 38 points for a third line guy. He was plus 18. What can I complain about? And looking at the plus minus on this team, we were incredible. Don't sleep on us. We're making moves in the postseason. Then again, that's exactly what the Boston Bruins thought, and they lost to Florida, so who knows? Samsonov did a pretty solid job as our starting goalie. 41 wins this season, 3 shouts, a 902 save percentage, and 296 goals against. Definitely can't complain about those numbers. And Phoenix Copley, he continues to do the unthinkable. A 16 and 3 record this season with two shutouts. Keep holding it down as the backup. You're doing a fantastic job. Looking at the entire league, we got Nathan McKinnon leading the way with 114 points. And who's second? None other than David Pasternak. 59 goals, 53 assists, 112 points. Even though he's not on the Bruins anymore, he's still succeeding, still scoring goals. You love to see it. You really do. For our guy Malkin, third in league scoring. Everyone was doubting that trade. No one believed in the process. And here we are. Who would have thought? So here we are in the postseason. We got the Carolina Hurricanes in the first round. Four games is all I'm asking. Like literally just win four games. We don't need to win a Stanley Cup because Boston didn't even get close to that. Just win four games. So it looks like this new Boston Bruins team's got a bit of adversity because they're coming back from a 4-1 deficit in this game. Four unanswered in the third period and they're still in game one away from Carolina. However, that adversity is not really showing up in game two because we're losing this one two to one. Don't lose in the first round. Don't you dare lose to me in the first round. Another massive third period from the Boston Bruins is going to allow them to take game three and then a shuttle from Samsonov has given us a 3-1 series lead. You remember what happened last time the Boston Bruins had a 3-1 series lead? Yeah, it happened yesterday. They blew it. So yeah, try not to blow it. So Brad Marchand just scored for Carolina and for some reason he's going to lead the comeback against us, isn't he? He's going to be the death of the Boston Bruins. He's somehow going to lead this Carolina Hurricanes team to a Stanley Cup, defeating us in the first round, coming back from a 3-1 deficit. I can see it all happening now. And in game six, we're going to need a bit of overtime because after 60 minutes, we're tied 3-3 and I'm incredibly concerned. But I shouldn't be concerned because early into overtime, Evgeny Malkin's bringing the puck into the zone. He's sending it over to Matthew Kachuk and Kachuk. He's going to split it in between two defenders. He's beaten Freddie Anderson and the Boston Bruins are off to the next round. And who do we have? We got the perfect matchup, the Florida Panthers. Sweep them. I want us to absolutely smoke this team. 4-0, beat them 5-0 in every single game. Don't even allow a goal. We are beating the Florida Panthers. I can guarantee you that. Florida couldn't even compete with the Boston Bruins. Samsonov's making 38 saves and we're rolling. We're taking game one and we're not stopping there because five goals in the second period is going to allow us to steal game two. And then here we are in game three and Samsonov, he's holding it down again. 21 saves, only allowing one goal. We had a 4-0 lead and the Boston Bruins were one game away from sweeping the Florida Panthers. And in game four, frauds. 
The Florida Panthers are full of frauds. Matthew Kachuk's not there to save you anymore. He's on our team. Samsonov, not the greatest game from you, but you still held it down. We're off to the conference finals, and now we got the Pittsburgh Penguins, and they have the captain, Patrice Bergeron. I don't know why it's working out like this, but these just seem to be the perfect matchups in the postseason for us. Game one would be a tough one for us, but we're going to be coming out on top in a 3-1 victory. And in game two, we're going to need a bit of overtime, but we made a huge comeback. Four unanswered to send us there, now we got to finish it off. But even after making that incredible comeback, being down 5-1 in the game and forcing overtime, Patrice Bergeron's going to end it against us. Patrice Bergeron is being such an L mans. What are you doing, my guy? You should let the Boston Bruins win. But it looks like one overtime game isn't enough because in game three, we're headed back in a 2-2 tie. On the ensuing power play, five minutes into the extra frame, some great passing from the Boston Bruins is gonna find Matthew Kachuk wide open in front of the net. He's deflecting this one to the net and the Boston Bruins, they've got themselves a 2-1 series lead. But for some reason, the Pittsburgh Penguins are just a completely different team now. They're gonna take game four, four to one, and they've evened this series up. Game five has been an incredible goalie match with both guys standing on their head. But we're gonna need a bit of overtime after 60 minutes. With five minutes left in overtime, Ryan Graves is going to make an incredible pass over to Velarde. Velarde's able to get past the defense, and then he's going to rip a rocket right over Tristan Jari's glove, and the Boston Bruins are now one game away from the Stanley Cup final. And in game six, they're going to be closing it out. A lone third period goal from Carver Hagee sending us to the Stanley Cup final, and who do we have to face in the Stanley Cup final? It's only fitting. The Los Angeles Kings, and who's in between the pipes for them? Linus Allmark. Boston, it's time to get rid of the demons. Let's beat this team. It looks like three periods wouldn't be enough for this game, as we're tied 4-4 heading into overtime and there's just something different with this boston bruins team because they keep battling they're securing all these loose pucks some great tic-tac-toe passing is going to find carter for Hege wide open in front of the net he's burying this one and boston's rolling now four unanswered in the third period is going to lead to a 6-3 win in game two and then in game three boston's just built a bit different another six goal game one game away from completing the sweep one game away from winning a stanley cup don sweeney i'm coming for your job my guy in game four though when i thought things were all wrapped up los angeles is making the comeback we had a 5-1 lead but the Kings knocked that down to a 5-4 game. But in crunch time, they wouldn't be able to score another goal. And the Boston Bruins are Stanley Cup champs. I did not expect us to win a Stanley Cup in this video. The entire plan was for me just to get this team out of the first round. I traded the entire core away and just won a Stanley Cup. I don't know how I did that. I literally just did the impossible. Nah, Don Sweeney, I'm coming for your job. Let me cook here, man. I know what I'm doing.